boosting the range of in-service missiles by 20% and increasing the power of the blast by 40% allows the U.S. military to deploy and launch missiles over greater distances, giving it a crushing regional advantage. Today we'll talk about how this fourth-generation king of explosives actually achieves such a big performance boost and allows the U.S. military to spend billions of dollars on mass production. In recent times, the U.S. has been working on a program where the Pentagon and Congress are considering the use of a more powerful propellant with a lighter warhead. This led to the launch of a new program in next year's National Defense Authorization Act that allocates at least $13 million for planning, expanding, and manufacturing compounds that could be used for missile propulsion or to replace the explosive material of warheads. While this is only a small portion of a total defense budget of $886 billion, the initiation of this program means that billions in military spending could eventually be required. According to the U.S. military's plan, the compound could increase the range of active munitions by 20%, allowing the U.S. military to deploy and fire munitions over greater distances, thereby gaining an advantage in various areas and improving the survivability of the U.S. military. Some people might think that explosives don't sound advanced enough. It is true that with the development of weapons, countries are developing in the direction of high technology. But no matter how the weapons develop, if you want to have powerful killing power, you will inevitably be inseparable from the explosives. Even the most powerful nuclear weapons require conventional explosives to detonate. So whoever can take the lead in upgrading explosives will be ahead of other countries. The power of explosives is determined by the speed of propagation of the shock wave when it explodes. Modern explosives first came from the Swedish chemist Nobel, also known as the father of the bomb, who developed an explosive called nitroglycerin. Compared with traditional black powder, nitroglycerin is at least 30 times more powerful, and the explosion speed can reach 5,700 meters per second. Nitroglycerin is very powerful, but it is also very unstable, flammable, and explosive. A little touch or static electricity may detonate, there is a huge risk in preservation and transportation. Later, when Nobel added diatomaceous earth to nitroglycerin, the safety of explosives was improved and is widely used in the military and other fields. After this, the second generation of explosives, TNT, appeared, its full name is trinitrotoluene, invented by the German chemist Will Brand. Each kilogram of TNT can produce 4.2 million joules of energy, and the explosion speed also reached 6,900 meters per second. This material is much safer, does not burn or explode even when hit by a bullet, and is very stable in conditions such as high temperatures and cold. TNT's lower cost, which soon replaced the original nitroglycerin, made it the second generation of the king of explosives. In the 19th century, the German scientist Henning accidentally invented a brown powder explosive. Its explosive power is equivalent to 1.5 times the TNT, and the explosion speed has been increased to 8,750 meters per second. It only takes the size of a bar of soap to blow up a building. The famous C-4 plastic explosive is a derivative of Royal Demolition Explosive. RDX is very powerful, countries also want to use it as a variety of weapons gunpowder, but the safety of RDX is very low, if encountered in open fire or impact, it will cause combustion and explosion. Therefore, it is difficult to popularize the use of RDX on a large scale. However, after many years of experimentation and exploration in various countries, RDX has finally found two suitable uses. One is to do nuclear bomb detonators, and the other is to do rocket boosters. Although RDX is unstable and easy to explode, it is very powerful, and the resulting energy is also very large. And nuclear reactions in nuclear weapons are difficult to accomplish without high temperatures. General TNT explosives explosion speed and energy are difficult to meet the detonation requirements of nuclear bombs, only RDX can be achieved. 
So modern nuclear weapons will be loaded with a certain weight of RDX as a nuclear bomb detonator. In rocket boosting, the use of RDX increases the explosion speed. With the same volume of RDX and TNT loaded into the rocket, the former can more efficiently send the rocket into near-Earth orbit. However, research on explosives slowed down in the decades following the creation of RDX. There were some new explosives created, but they were basically very limited enhancements. It wasn't until the advent of the CL-20 that a fourth generation of explosives was standardized. In the 1980s, a powerful new explosive was developed in a laboratory in the United States. The site chosen for testing at the time was the U.S. Naval Weapons Test Site in California, called China Lake. This is an extremely secretive military site in the western desert of the United States, engaged in the research and development of all kinds of top military technology from nuclear bombs to aerospace, almost as famous as Area 51. So this explosive is also known as China Lake 20 compounds, the chemical name is hexanitrohexazisoorzidin, and the abbreviation is CL20. Compared with conventional explosives, the explosive power of CL20 is very large, up to three times that of TNT, with an explosion speed of 9,500 meters per second. It is the highest energy and most powerful non-nuclear monolithic explosive that can be practically applied among the currently known explosives. In terms of power, CL-20 can even replace tactical nuclear weapons against targets. The use of CL-20 ammunition has also provided an opportunity for the development of missiles, nuclear devices, and a number of other weapons and equipment to improve efficiency and optimize miniaturization. For a while, all countries began to work hard on research and development, hoping to become one of the countries with the ability to develop and produce CL-20. According to a paper released by the United States, this high-energy material allows a 400-pound bomb to have the same lethality as the current 1,000-pound bomb in service, far exceeding the performance of RDX explosives. Its depth of penetration can be increased by more than 40%, which significantly increases the overall lethality of the warhead for certain specific scenarios. With the same charge, bombs or missiles using CL-20 will be more powerful than normal weapons and can be more easily used against targets such as hardened aircraft shelters and underground bunkers. It can also replace tactical nuclear weapons to a certain extent, but without the nuclear radiation contamination of nuclear weapons, so it can be said to be the best choice for conducting conventional strikes. Take anti-ship missiles as an example. If the warhead uses CL-20, no matter how many decks the enemy battleship has, it has to be pierced. Whether or not it can directly sink the carrier, I'm not sure, but with no decks, the carrier loses the ability to take off and recover the carrier's aircraft, and thus the carrier's combat capability is lost. In addition, any missiles, shells, torpedoes, or even nuclear weapon warheads need to be filled with explosives in order to obtain the ability to strike, and the strength of the explosives can directly affect the destructive effect of the weapon. If we can develop light quality and powerful explosives, it will greatly promote the development of weapons. Even the missiles of warplanes can be reduced in size and weight through the use of the CL-20, and then more missiles can be loaded into the weapons bay. In addition to this, the presence of the CL-20 can also significantly increase the range of the weapon. A US study in 2021 said that CL-20 could also act as a propellant for missiles, which would allow for a significant increase in their range. For long-range air defense missiles or anti-ship missiles, CL-20 is an excellent propellant. So CL-20 is quite important to the United States. But although the United States is the first country to master this new explosive technology, the manufacture of CL-20 is too difficult. So far, we have not realized the large-scale, low-cost production of CL-20, which requires only a small amount of preparation in the laboratory. A kilogram of CL-20 cost tens of thousands of dollars at the beginning, dropping in recent years to 1,000 US dollars. But a missile will use hundreds of kilograms of explosives. Even the United States can't afford to use it at this price, 
which is why the U.S. has decided to invest a large budget in researching CL-20 production methods in the hope of lowering the cost of mass-producing CL-20. In order to speed up the research and development program, the United States will establish an Office of Energetic Materials in the Department of Defense, which will be under the direct orders of the U.S. Department of Defense. This office will be the coordinating agency for the U.S. Army, Navy, and Air Force. The cost of repowering U.S. stockpile weapons or using new explosive chemicals could run into the billions of dollars, a figure that would depend heavily on which weapons are replaced with power systems and how many are modified or procured, said Tom Caraco, a weapons expert at the U.S. Center for Strategic and International Studies. The Maryland-based Nuclear Energy Materials Technology Center has been evaluating which of six munitions would be suitable to equip the CL-20. Among them are Lockheed Martin's AGM-158C anti-ship missile and the AGM-158B Jasmer, which would be the best choice for testing. Other possible weapons include Boeing's AGM-84 Harpoon and the FGM-148 Javelin. Currently, the U.S. House Armed Services Committee's Tactical Air and Land Forces Panel on Military Spending for 2024 is hoping that the Department of Defense can initiate a pilot program to use the CL-20 explosive in three missiles. Currently, Northrop Grumman can produce between 10,000 and 20,000 pounds of CL-20 per year, and while it is able to scale up production significantly, only an increase in orders for CL-20 will bring its cost down.